Vicki Howell here to help kick off the Culture Club Knit Along for Yarnspirations.com. We are going to be making a cowl and in this video I'm going to be breaking down brioche stitch and getting you assimilated to using the applied I-cord as is called for in the shadow cowl, which you can see is two color brioche, making it completely reversible, giving it a light side and a dark side with this great pop color edging. We are going to be going over many things and you're going to be totally comfortable with making this project by the end of it. We're going to work with the two color cast on, the two setup rows, and then the four pattern stitch rows which make up the entire body of the cowl. I'm going to show you how to cast off and it's also called bind off in the pattern stitch and then we'll be working on the applied eye cord. So let's go ahead and dive right in with casting on. Okay, so this pattern, as I mentioned before, has a dark side and a, and a light side. So in two color brioche, you're really only ever actually knitting with one color at a time, and you'll be slipping other colors, but you do need to have both of them on the needle at all times. So you can actually use any cast on method that you want for this. Um, I've, I feel like the short, or excuse me, the long tail cast on um, is just as easy and it is anything else, but by any means, if you found a better way, please do it. This one is, let me see if I can bring a little more light over here. So this one calls for color A and color B, and I've started by just putting a slip knot of each color on. So those count as the first two stitches. I'll be working in swatches for this demonstration, so I won't be doing the entire width of the cowl, so uh, you don't need to pay attention to how many stitches I have on the needle, just the actual method. So to cast on with two colors, I have a, I have a black stitch and a bone stitch, a bone color stitch, so it's time for the black one again. So I'm gonna pull the tails through, ignoring color B, the bone stitch, and then cast on a stitch with color A, which is black. All right, now I need to alternate, so I need to pull the bone, and I'm doing the regular old cast on, but I'm just alternating which ones. So just a refresher in case this is not a cast on that you normally do. You've got the yarn held in your pinky and your ring finger. You make what looks kind of like a little slingshot. You come under the loop that's on your thumb, around and pick the loop that's around your pointer finger, and let that slide on. And you're gonna continue doing that, alternating, until you have as many stitches are called for in the pattern, and it actually has you ending with a color A, which is the black. So once we've done that, you're going to have what looks like this, only you will of course have many more stitches, but again, I'm working in swatches. And you're going to be ready to work with the first setup row. Okay, so with the setup row, you're going to be beginning, the first setup row is beginning with color A. And the reason why we're working with circular needles, even though this piece is not knit, whoops, excuse me, is not knit in the round, is because um, we're going to be sliding stitches from one side to the other. We're working, essentially we're working every row twice. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So to set up this row, it's calling for us to knit one with color A, which is the black, knit one, yarn forward, which is the YF, slip one with the yarn forward purlwise, so you're slipping that bone color because we're not actually working with the bone color right now, yarn over, so we just have to bring that yarn up, knit one. And it says to repeat that from the star to the end of the row. So again, I'm gonna show you just one more time, yarn forward, Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna do this whole row, why not? Slipped that row, that stitch, 
yarned over, knit one. Yarn forward, yarn over, knit one. And what's happening here is that we are completely just avoiding color B, the bone color. But you might also notice that we are increase, increasing stitches. I just noticed that I did something. So I act so when you're when you're sliding the stitch over, that yarn forward right here really already creates your yarn over. So resist the urge, which I just did to wrap it around again. You don't need to do that, it's already there for your knit one. stitches just slipped off. That can sometimes happen for the first row. First rows of any project are always a little persnickety. Okay, so I am at the end of the first setup row, but unlike with most projects, I am not going to turn around because I need to go back and work this whole row again, but with the opposite color. So this is why we're using the circular needles. We need to pull it so that we can come back and work with that color that we've left before, color B. So we're working this whole row again, but in this color. So this is setup row two. So with B, which is our bone color, you're gonna slip the first one with the yarn and back. Okay, then with yarn forward, you're going to purl two together. Okay, so now from here we're going to have our yarn forward again. And we're going to slip one purl wise with yarn forward. Then we need to yarn over, and because our yarn's all, the, all in front, but we're purling, we do need to bring it around. And we're going to purl two together. So, you'll notice here this is a setup row, but this is something that we're gonna be doing the entire time. We're always gonna be sliding the opposite color than, than our working yarn, than the color that our working yarn is here, right? And then we're always going to be purling or knitting two together, working two stitches together, that is, one of them will always be a yarn over and one will always be a stitch that's been worked. So you'll know in the future that if you get off track, if you're trying to knit two together or purl two together that are not in that orientation, then you need to stop and sort of count your work back and see where we go. So you're gonna go ahead and do this all the way to the end. Um, and then your rows will be set up. So I'm going to go ahead and set this one aside. Actually, you know what, let me, I showed you all the first setup row, let me just do this one. All right, so you'll see that you kind of get in a rhythm. You know, it's slip one purl wise, yarn over, purl two together, again. And again. Oops. That one's 
slipped off for me. Okay, there's a yarn over and a worked stitch. I know I need to work those together. Okay, and then we're ending with a slip one, which I just did, purl two together, and then on that last stitch we're going to slip one with the yarn forward purl wise. Okay, so now we finished the setup rows. We are forever and always done with those. We are gonna now turn the work over. So after you've worked every row twice, not the setup rows, but just as a general rule, um, you'll be turning, um, you'll be flipping the work as you always would. And you can see how cool the, uh, the dual cast on looks after you've worked a little bit. I really like how that looks. Okay, so now we are ready to work the first row of our four row pattern stitch. I've flipped over my piece because we have done our two setup rows, which was really just working the same row twice, right? But with two separate colors. So now we're ready to work a row. All right, so we're, we're back to using color A, which is our black. And we are going to knit that first stitch and then this is where our star starts, where our repeat's gonna start. With the yarn forward, we're going to slip the stitch purlwise. Then, and you might have to give the tail a little tug for that first one. Then you're going to yarn over and purl two together. And that will be the slip stitch and the yarn over from the stitch bullet or the row below. All right, so again, slip the stitch purlwise yarn over, purl two together. Slip that stitch so it's the opposite color than your working yarn, and your yarn is in front already. Yarn over, purl two together. And you're gonna continue that all the way to the opposite end. And once you're finished with that, you will be done with your color A, and you need to slide all your stitches back to the opposite end so we can work that whole row again, but in color B. So this will be row two of your pattern, of your stitch pattern. All right, so for this one, uh, just sort of a side note. So rows one and four, are both going to be purl two together. So I, I think of those as like bookends or the bread on your sandwich. Um, and I'm telling you these things just in case you, you know, brain fade and forget what row you're on because, you know, life happens. Um, and that's that can just be a little like context clue for you. So if you're on a, a rows two or three, you're going to be knitting two together. So the, you know, meat and veggies of the sandwich are the knit two together rows and the bread are the purl two together rows. All right, so moving on. So we are on second row right now. So with B, we will be slipping that first stitch, but with the yarn and back. And then we are going to knit two together. We're going to slip one purl wise, but with the yarn in front yarn over, it's already right there, and then knit two together. So we'll have to bring that yarn in front again. We're gonna slip that color, and we know that this is correct that we're slipping it, why? Because it's the opposite color than is our working yarn. Yarn over, knit two together. Okay, I'm just gonna show you one more time. Slip one purlwise, the yarn over is right there. knit two together. And you'll do that all the way to the end. And what you will end up with is
not that one, this little guy. All right, so now we know that we can turn again because, so it would have looked like this, I would have finished the row and I would have worked, because I've worked two rows, one and two, I've now worked both colors. So this time I can just flip. And you'll never be confused about when you have to slide or when you'll have to flip because you always have to turn or flip when both colors of the working yarn, which is the yarn attached to the skein, are on the are on one side together. And happy unity. All right, so we are on row three now. Row three says with A, which we know now because we are super pros with knowing our colors, this many rows in, that A is black. We're going to knit one. With our yarn in front, we are going to slip one purlwise, yarn over, and knit two together. And that's it. That's pretty familiar, right? Slip one, knit two together, yarn forward, knit one, slip one, with our yarn over, we're knitting two together. Let me just show you one more time. Yarn forward, knit one purl, or excuse me, slip one purl wise, knit two together. And you will do that all the way to the end of that row. And then it will look like this. But what do we see here? We see that we've got working yarn, ignore these tails. These are just little tails. We've got our main working yarn on opposite sides. So we know that this is a slide row and not a turn row. So we are going to push our yarn, slide it all the way down, slide it home. And this, my friends, is the last row of our pattern row. So once you've got this, you know what you, what you need to make the entire body of the cowl. It's pretty exciting. We're almost there. Okay, with B, which is our bone color, we are going to be slipping one purl wise with yarn in front and then purling together the next two, which I'm just going to beat this into your head, is a yarn over and a slip stitch from the row before. Slip one, yarn over, purl to two together. And we remember from what I said earlier, this is a purl two together row, so it must be one of our bookends, our sandwich slices. Just show you one last time. We're going to slip one purl wise, yarn forward, yarn over. Purl two together. And I'm just going to kind of pull this so you can see. And you'll do that all the way to the end. Once you've and done that, you will just repeat that for as long as you want the cowl or um, as long as the pattern calls for, which is um, about 45 inches, 114.5 centimeters. Um, but, you know. You can play with it. If you want a super long cowl or an eternity scarf, you can absolutely do it that way. Um, or you could probably even go a little bit shorter, although I wouldn't recommend too much shorter. Okay, so we are going to knit one. And then we're going to knit another one. And, and pass that stitch over the first one. So far, seems, seems like the usual bind off. But from there, we're going to purl two together and it'll be the slip stitch and the yarn over. And then we will pass that stitch over that. So then we repeat again. You're gonna knit one. Pass that first stitch over. And then you're going to purl two together. Pass that. Knit one, pass the stitch over, purl two together, pass the stitch over. 
and you'll do that all the way until your piece is completely bound off. All right, so this piece has been bound off. That's actually cast on row, I can tell because I can see that pretty little bottom. Um, again, I'm just working in swatches just to make things easier to see. You can see what the difference looks like for the cast on and the bound off or cast off row. And now it is calling for, uh, it's time to work our applied I-cord edging with our contrasting color. So this will be color C. So I'm gonna pull in this super neon green. Um, I should mention that the pattern actually calls for a chartreuse. I'm using neon just because I had that in my stash. It's the same Karen Simply Soft though. So we're gonna start, let's pretend this is our cowl, right? So this is the long edge of the cowl right here. And we're gonna begin by with, we're bringing in a double pointed needle. We'll have a set of two double pointed needles and you're gonna cast on five stitches and it doesn't really matter at all how you do that. So I'm just gonna do that quickly because I assume we all know how to cast on at this point. Okay, so we've got our five stitches, but now I need to pick up another stitch along the long edge of our piece. So I'm going to insert into the stitch along the side, and then I just yarn over and pick, pick that stitch up. So now I have six stitches on the needle. So then I'm going to take all of those stitches and slide them over to the other side. You see a theme in this project? You could technically probably do this with, a, with your set of uh, circulars too. It just might get a little um, precarious with long cords. Then, so now we're gonna work the row. So we're going to bring the, so we've slid it, so we bring the yarn across the back because we're working I cord, right? And we're going to start knitting. So we knit four, one, two, three, four, and then we need to knit these two together, but through the back loop. So, oops, my stitches slipped off. That happens sometimes in the first row. So to knit through the back loop, instead of going through the front, through the front legs, you're gonna go through the back. So you might have to do a little wiggle waggle for this first row, it's just how it, how it is with beginnings of projects or beginnings of techniques, and you're going to knit them together. Okay, so then, you're going to pick up another stitch while I'm here. Yarn over, pick it up. So we're kind of climbing up at the same time. We're gonna slide all those stitches over and we are gonna lather, rinse, repeat, right? So we're bringing the yarn across. And then we're gonna knit the first four. See how much easier it is on the second row now that the stitches can glide on the needles. So I've worked those. Now I've got to knit these two together. And it's attaching. I'm gonna do one more just for, just for fun. Um, and also I just want you to see a little bit how it is um, forming into the eye cord. So I've picked up that stitch and now I want to slide it on home to the opposite side. Knitting 
four. Knitting the last two stitches together through the back loop. And you can see here how it's rounding because of the I cord. And I'm gonna, just going to pull in the finished cowl so you can really see how that looks once it's attached. And it's because it's I cord, it looks pretty darn good on both sides. So the last thing that you would do is just seam together um, the two shorter ends of the cowl. You can see here, I'll show you this part. They just seamed it together by whip stitching. Um, you can use, you can really use any method that you want that makes you happy. Um, you're actually not really gonna see it anyway because you're probably gonna wear it either hanging or you might, you know, double it over. <laughs> not that you can really tell what I'm doing, but you can double it over. And that's it. I mean, I know it seems intimidating. Brioche was actually not something that I really gave a lot of thought to because it seemed a bit intimidating to me before I had the opportunity to interview some people for, um, you know, a TV show I worked on. Um, but it really, it's got a cool effect and it's totally doable once you get into the zone. It's really just that four row pattern once you've set up. And then the I cord is just a really nice, um, technique to know um, kind of steps it up a notch adding it as you go. So I'm super proud of you that you have stepped up your knits with, uh, with us and I look forward to seeing all of your finished projects. Thanks a lot guys.